Welcome back everybody. In this video we're going to be discussing speed versus time graphs and this video is going to follow a very similar format to the displacement versus time graphs video. Basically I'm going to go through a bunch of scenarios, discuss them, what they mean, their implications. If you haven't watched the displacement versus time graphs video I'd highly recommend you do that before this one because this video is sort of like a continuation of the displacement versus time graphs. Now, first thing I wanna point out before we actually get into the graphs is that you can't tell what is happening with displacement from a speed versus time graph. Remember when we did a uh, displacement versus time graphs, we can tell what was happening with the speed, but we can't go backwards. We can't be given a speed versus time graph and then see what's happening with displacement. Because if you remember, speed can be increasing, but an object can be increasing displacement or decreasing displacement. So, if you notice, when we go over these scenarios, I'm not going to mention anything about displacement. There's actually one like small scenario where you can tell what's happening with the displacement, and I'll mention that uh, in the middle. But uh, other than that small one case, you can't tell what's happening to the displacement of an object from a speed versus time graph. You could just tell whether the speed is increasing or decreasing and whether the rate of change of speed is increasing, decreasing, or constant. Okay, so let's start off with these two scenarios. So we have speed versus time graphs. This first scenario is basically a line with a positive slope. Well, notice how this line is increasing as we read from left to right, meaning that the speed is increasing. And when speed is increasing, as I mentioned in the displacement versus time graphs video, whenever speed is increasing, that means the object is accelerating. Now what about the rate of change of the speed? Well, rate of change, if you remember, is always what? Slope of the tangent. So if we draw a bunch of tangents, notice how their slopes are all um, the same. So they're constant. So the rate of change of speed is constant. right or it's accelerating at a constant rate so speed is increasing and the rate of change of speed is constant now notice how these descriptions differ from when we had the same graph but it was a displacement versus time graph when it was a displacement versus time graph displacement was increasing and the speed was constant but now, because this is a speed versus time graph, the speed is increasing and the rate of change of speed is constant. So just be aware of that. You may want to look at this description and then this, uh, the description of a displacement versus time graph and notice what their differences are. It's very important. So, next one. This is a speed versus time graph that has a line with a negative slope. So obviously, this is decreasing, so the speed is decreasing. Now, whenever speed is decreasing, means what? The object is decelerating. And the rate of change, I'll just uh, represent that as ROC. So rate of change of speed is what in this case? Well, if we draw a bunch of tangents, Notice how the slopes are the same. They're negative slopes, but they're all the same. So the rate of change of speed is constant. And again, take this graph, this negative slope line, and compare these descriptions to the negative slope line of a displacement versus time graph and notice the differences. I think it will help you understand it a lot more. What if we have a straight horizontal line like this for a speed versus time graph? Well, notice how the speed is not increasing, it's not decreasing, so the speed is constant. 
Okay, another way to say this is the object is not accelerating or decelerating when a speed is constant. And then what about the rate of change of the speed? Well, if we draw tangents, they're all going to be horizontal. They're going to be the same slope as this line. And a horizontal line has a slope of what? Zero. So the rate of change of speed in this case is equal to zero. And again, notice so far from all these descriptions that we've done up until this point, I haven't mentioned anything about displacement because we can't tell what's happening with the displacement. We can tell that the speed is constant, but speed can be constant when an object is increasing displacement or is decreasing displacement. If an object is going up a hill, it could be going at a constant speed, which would be represented with this graph, or it could be going down a hill at a constant speed, which again would be represented by this graph. We can't tell from a speed versus time graph what's happening with displacement. However, there is one small case. How would we tell what the speed of a time, um, the speed versus time graph is of an object that is not moving? So if an object is not moving, then we know it's displacement is what? Constant. And this is the only time where we can sort of include displacement in the description of a speed versus time graph. When the displacement is constant, when the object is not moving, if you remember, we said that that means that the speed of the object is equal to zero. So the graph would look something like this. So for this period of time, if the speed of the object is zero, so the graph, the speed versus time graph looks like that, then we know that the displacement is constant and means the object is not moving. So that's the one small scenario where we can take a speed versus time graph. If it looks like that, we can tell what's happening with the displacement of the object. Basically, nothing is happening. It's constant and it's not moving. Now, what about these two scenarios? They're both curves, but notice how both of these curves, they are increasing as we read from left to right. The speed is going up, hence the speed is increasing. So that means for both of these scenarios, the object is accelerating. And you got to be careful because if you remember a displacement versus time graph, if it looked like this, we said that the object was decelerating, the speed was decreasing, but that was a displacement versus time graph. In this case, a speed versus time graph, the speed is always increasing, so the object is still accelerating when a speed versus time graph looks like this. However, the rate of change is decreasing. So we will get to that. Let's do this one first. What's the rate of change of the speed? So what would be, what would be happening to the slopes of the tangents? Well, notice they are getting more steep. So the rate of change of speed is increasing. Right? So it's increasing speed at an increasing rate, right? Or it's accelerating at an increasing rate. And then here, notice the slopes of the tangents, they are getting less steep. So the rate of change of speed is decreasing. All right, so you can have speed increasing, an object can be accelerating, but its rate of change of speed is decreasing, or it's accelerating at a decreasing rate. Now, what do I mean by that? So let's say that this scenario, let's say an object is moving at 10 meters per second, okay, and then all of a sudden, 
one second later, it's moving at 20 meters per second. And then a second later after that, it's moving at 28 meters per second. And then perhaps it's moving at 32 meters per second. Well, what's happening with the speed of this object? Well, the speed is going up. 10, 20, 28, 32, right? The object is moving faster and faster and faster. However, the rate of change of speed is decreasing because notice the difference from 10 to 20 is 10. The difference from 20 to 28 is 8. And then the difference from 28 to 32 is 4. And we assume that these are happening every second, right? So the speed is increasing. Object is still accelerating but the rate of change of speed is decreasing, meaning that it's increasing at a smaller rate. And then uh, this scenario, you can have an object traveling at 10 meters per second, a second later at 12 meters per second, and then at 16 meters per second, and then maybe at 24 meters per second, right? Object is uh, increasing speed, the speed is going up, so it's accelerating, but the difference between each, it's going from 10 meters to 12 meters, so it's changing its speed by two meters per second, then by four meters per second, then by eight meters per second. So the rate of change of speed is increasing over there as well. So just be aware of that difference and also be aware of the difference between this graph, speed versus time graph and its description and a displacement versus time graph that has the same shapes and its respective description as well. And then our final two cases, both of these are curves that um, are decreasing, meaning the speed is decreasing for both of these, obviously, so it means the object is decelerating. What about the rate of change though? The rate of change of speed. So here the rate of change of speed What do we do? Draw some tangents. Notice how the tangents are getting more and more steep. So the rate of change of speed is increasing. So even though the speed is decreasing, the rate of change of speed is increasing. So an example of that would be an object is traveling at 30 meters per second. And then one second later, it's traveling at 25 meters per second. So notice how the speed is decreasing. The object is decelerating. So a second later at 25 meters per second, then a second later after that, maybe it's at 10 meters per second. Right? So notice how it went from 30 to 25. So it went down by 5, and then it went down by 15. Right? So it's decelerating, but at a faster, at a uh, increasing rate. And then in this case, object is decelerating, speed is going down, um, but its rate of change of speed is decreasing because the slopes of the tangents are getting less and less steep. So, object is traveling at 30 meters per second. A second later, perhaps it's traveling at 20 meters per second. So the speed is going down, it's decelerating. And then a second after that, maybe it's traveling at 15 meters per second. And then at 12 meters per second. Right, so the speed is always going down, the object is always decelerating, but at a decreasing rate. From here to here, it went down by 10, but then from here to here, it went down by 5, and then from here to here, it only went down by 3. So, perhaps a little bit confusing. I feel like displacement versus time graphs are easier to get your head around because the rate of change of displacement is just the speed. So when we have curves, we can tell the speed is increasing, speed is decreasing. But with speed versus time graphs, this rate of change stuff is not as intuitive. We have to deal with acceleration, deceleration. It's sort of, I feel like, tougher, at least for me, 
to get your head around. I feel like displacement versus time graphs are easier to deal with. However, unfortunately, you do have to know these speed versus time graphs. Sometimes you'll be asked to describe them. Sometimes you'll even be asked to draw them. So make sure that uh, you understand the difference between displacement versus time graphs, speed versus time graphs, their different shapes and their different respective descriptions. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.